Try to breathe in a way that's comfortable and stay with the breath. Give it your full attention. See how refreshing you can make the breath. Energizing if you're feeling tired. Soothing if you're feeling tense. Try to figure out what kind of breathing feels just right. You're trying to find a sense of pleasure inside. You can think of the Buddha, his quest for awakening. First he'd been looking for pleasure and sensuality. He found that that wasn't satisfying. Then he tried to beat his mind into submission by torturing it and denying it all kinds of pleasure. Well, that wasn't going to work either. Then he found he could find a blameless pleasure here, getting the mind into concentration. So it's good that we have this opportunity, this alternative. Psychologists have studied people and their quest for happiness. And have noticed that if you get people to really examine very carefully the things they say make them happy, they begin to realize there's not much there. It's not very dependable. It's not all that satisfying. And the conclusion some people come to is that, well, you shouldn't try to examine your happiness too much. It reduces your happiness. But that wasn't the Buddha's approach. He said, really look carefully at the things you look for, in which you look for happiness. And you realize there must be something else. There must be something better. That's what put him on the path to awakening. So we've learned from him that there is a better happiness. Even though the happiness of concentration is just part of the path, it's not the goal. Still, it's a lot better than wandering around in sensual pleasures or tormenting yourself. Because this is a happiness that rewards contemplation. As you come to appreciate, more, appreciate it more and more, it becomes more and more the center of your quest for happiness. And ultimately, the more you examine it, the more you realize there must be something even better than this. But this is the way there. So hold on to this for the time being. This is the path that takes you to where you want to go. And it lifts you above your ordinary concerns for happiness. And it gives you something much better. Something that does bear scrutiny. So many people go through life thinking, well, as long as I don't think too much, then I'm okay. I saw a video one time of a French Dharma teacher saying that you have to simply accept things as they are, realize you can't make any difference in life, and be okay with that. And that, she said, was what the Buddha taught. The interviewer asked her, well, doesn't that sound defeatist or pessimistic? And the teacher said, well, only if you think about it. So we don't want a happiness that you can't think about, a happiness that you can't scrutinize. We want a happiness that bears scrutiny. Happiness is good from all directions. And part of right view is realizing that it is possible to find that. Not only that it's possible in general, but you have the capability of finding it. When you get discouraged and think you can't do it, okay, that's wrong view. Remember that the Buddhist teaching is for everybody. Everybody who's willing to be trained. So as long as you're willing to be trained, there's hope.